everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. Sleep affects every organ system, every disease state. So when we look at sleep, what does it really affect? It affects us emotionally. So it affects whether or not we get depressed. It affects our anxiety. It affects our moods. It affects everything. It affects our physicality. One of the things we have to understand is the idea that I'm not getting enough sleep. Is it quantity or is it quality of sleep? Let's say you're sleeping seven and a half hours, right? And you just, you wake up and you feel like crap. You're like, what the heck is going on? The very first thing I talked about with people is consistency. Most people don't think about the consistency of their sleep, but it turns out that that's the most important factor. In fact, if all of your viewers and listeners took one thing from me today, it would be wake up at the same time every day, including the weekends. At the end of the day, looking at the amount of sleep that you need, it's individual. If you get that amount of sleep and you don't feel good, get a little bit more. If you still don't, then it's probably time to talk with a doctor, right? Because that could be a quality issue. Now, the next question that people always ask me about is, well, what can I do to improve my sleep? Exercise is the best, best way to improve sleep quality. My recommendation for improving sleep quality is 20 minutes of cardio every day at a minimum. There's nothing better for sleep than exercise. But here's the key. You don't want to exercise too close to bedtime because it increases your core body temperature and that makes it hard to fall asleep. So when we're looking at a bedroom environment, the number one thing I look for is light. And that's why I wear those blue light blocking glasses. The second thing I look at is temperature, right? And so the bottom line here is people have a hard time sleeping in the heat. There was a great study that came out uh, just this year uh, from NASA looking at not only the ambient temperature in the room, which they suggest should be somewhere around 65 to 75 degrees, but the humidity turns out to be an important factor. You should have a relative humidity of about 40%. And that appears to help with the sleep process. When they changed the humidity along with the temperature, they found that this combination of this 60 to 75 degrees in the ambient room temperature and then about a 40% humidity seemed to work the best in terms of environmental cues for sleep. So let's talk about sound as well. And so what's interesting about sound is that the more quiet it is, the more acute your hearing becomes. So you hear more, the quieter it is. So for somebody who tells me like, oh, Michael, I've, I got to have it all these different ways, I would actually say you might want to consider a white noise machine or a sound machine or something like that, because it's a known sound that you would be comfortable with over time. And then you wouldn't hear something that might be outside or what have you that really has no relevance, you know, generally speaking, one way or another. So having a good morning routine really sets your whole day. And a lot of people come to me like, Michael, I got morning fog, this sunlight and water thing. I, I, honestly, I know it sounds crazy. How could it be so simple? Trust me on this one. 15 minutes of sunlight within 15 minutes of getting up, 18 ounces of water every morning. If you do that for 10 days and you wake up at the same time every day, you're done. 